Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Non-Fungible Conference. I am so excited to dive into this topic with you. So today we'll be talking about what will your PFP wear in the metaverse? Whether you actually own a PFP or not, you actually already have a digital body. For most of you, it doesn't look 3D yet. But you've already been sculpting your digital identity ever since you created your very first usernames on the internet. We've been searching for belonging through websites, chat rooms, forums, websites, blogs, and really all that we've been looking for is our tribe and trying to signal who we are to the digital world. So today we've reached a new inflection point and we're now at this point where the evolution of our online identity and what we value as a society collectively is starting to change. How many of us here grew up with Star Wars and Star Trek? A lot of us, most of us. So maybe you got lightsabers for Christmas. Maybe you dressed up as Leia or Spock for Halloween. You rode the rides, you went to theme parks, you collected action figures, and you actually helped make Star Wars and Star Trek two of the most successful and globally beloved franchises in cinema. So these are two of the biggest science fiction communities we could belong to today. So what if I told you that the foundation of the next cultural franchise is actually being built by NFT projects? And what if you too could actually contribute to these stories? Artifact was founded by three friends in June of 2020 and designed digital shoes for the streetwear community. I am sure they did not anticipate that just 18 months later they will be getting acquired by Nike and becoming one of the most significant acquisitions in digital fashion history. Yuga Labs, the creator of the Board Apes and Yacht Club PFP collection, and the holder of some of the most coveted IPs in Web3, CryptoPunks, Board Ape Yacht Club, and MeBits, is just 13 months old, it's valued over $4 billion, and has an NFT-powered gaming metaverse in the works. So what does all of this actually tell us? NFTs and avatars are now part of the larger cultural narrative, metaverse brands are no longer niche, and community-owned and oriented creators and companies that actually value shared ownership are going to outpace legacy players. Now, why is this happening today? I've been in AR, VR industry since about 2016, and the conversation about the metaverse has been around for a couple of years. But NFTs fundamentally changed something. NFTs gave us the infrastructure to actually author, share, and propagate virtual content. So PFP Collection specifically created deeper belonging online and provided a sense of community that actually motivated people to get involved in these projects. The foundations for NFT technology to take off have actually been in the works for a while, specifically as music and fashion industries have already been utilizing drops, EPs, and capsule collections to generate buzz leading up to their projects. But before NFTs were even a thing, we had gorillas. Gorillaz is a band consisting of four animated characters living in fictional universes, comic strips, videos, music, music, and also short stories. So they became a universal sensation and even earned a place in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most successful virtual band. And despite of whether if, if you are a Gorillaz fan or not, I think every one of us has actually made a connection with someone or something online, and that connection does not feel any less real than our physical connections. So there are several very skilled creators today, like Blue, Teflon Sega, and Xanadu, who have expanded the definition of what it actually means to be a virtual personality. Blue is a one-man show and an alien that is trying to build an empire on Xanadu. He has already collaborated with Artifact and technically the people of music, Teflon Sega. Teflon is the purple-haired metaverse native avatar that has released dozens of songs and has acquired over 44 million plays online already. He has premiered an interactive virtual show with WaveXR quite recently, which actually demonstrated some of the wearables from his recently completely sold out NFT collection with the Dematerialized. And something unique happened this past September. A new kind of TV series called Alter Ego actually premiered on national television demonstrating the power of virtual beings, allowing singers and contestants to compete as virtual identities. So the one thing that this actually makes me wonder, what would you experiment with and what would you create if you weren't judged by the way that you look, but who you actually are? 
So these surreal virtual worlds that are starting to emerge, they are revealing possibilities for new forms of content creation, new relationships between artists and fan interactions, and also really unique virtual merchandise that is going to be spawned out from these creative universes. So as virtual identities move from 2D representations of themselves to 3D AR and VR playable characters, we're actually going to see new kinds of social experiences built around these collections, which will give rise to the PFP franchise. The, if you're wondering what the point of thematic NFT drops is, they're actually the start of a new dynamic way of creating content, and they're the first settlers and tribes of the metaverse. So PFP characters are actually highly valuable IP in the hands of their collectors. Content and experiences that will be build, built around that will actually jumpstart the virtual goods economy and spawn products, activations, music, videos, movies, books, fashion, reality TV shows, you name it. So we have actually the potential to create something that can be as culturally significant as Star Wars was for previous generations. And we're already starting to see pretty major content deals being built around PFP projects. So this raises a couple of interesting questions. What actually makes virtual social experiences interesting and memorable, maybe even nostalgic? What do community-derived products actually look like? How can collectors of these valuable IP projects share in the success that they actually help create? And who will dress the digital bodies of these PFPs and their fan base? So all of this information, what does it actually mean to a creator or to a company? So to understand what the characters are actually going to be wearing in the metaverse, we have to understand what they will be doing there. Since the pandemic, I think it's fair to say that we've been spending a lot more time in virtual environments. There are teenagers that are making six-figure incomes already selling pixelated glasses on Roblox. But today, digital assets are no longer just valuable to younger consumers. If we look at PFP collectors as a demographic, they are quite a diverse group of individuals. They are made up of crypto investors that were early in the game, newcomers, artists, founders, and many others. When we look at these worlds, even though the Ready Player One metaverse fidelity that we all want may not be here yet, but we can already play in Sandbox. We can meditate and relax in Allo Yoga's Roblox space. We can socialize in Digital Village, work in Horizon, party in Sensorium. We can shop in Decentraland, exercise with the tool like Supernatural. And we must also not forget about hybrid metaverses, which is going to be emerging like the digitized experience around Coachella this coming year. So when we look at virtual characters, PFP collectors are all promoting the myth of their virtual identity through their avatars. So as more and more virtual economies start to emerge and virtual currencies can become adopted and in-game purchases continue to become more normalized, virtual asset economy will grow as well alongside these spaces. So let's take a look at a pre-blockchain era NFT, the Mona Lisa herself. Her provenance may be accredited by the Louvre, but her real value is actually proliferated through references. Every single time that she is mentioned and images of her are printed on t-shirts, mugs, cards, books, the legend of her is actually kept alive and is part, a relevant part of the cultural discourse. So in a similar way, the layers of narratives, custom assets, and garments that will be built around PFP projects will also add to the project's relevance. And just like writing a viral tweet will help Twitter's stock price to go up, wearing a garment that will go digitally viral will also help make PFPs and the original creators of their garments to go up as well. Since the Industrial Revolution, we've actually had a pretty extractive relationship with both natural resources and human resources. And creative industries specifically, I think, are notoriously responsible for exploiting artists, exploiting designers, and who actually fear them pursuing any legal action because of the high costs and also damages to, potential damages to their reputation. I really do believe that NFTs can help redesign that relationship and the way that companies, creators, and fans actually exchange value amongst each other. And since NFT activity actually is on chain, it would allow all invested parties to benefit from the generated upside. So let's look at what does a connected experience across physical, digital, and meta realms actually looks like and how it will make your brand more accessible, discoverable, and help your community to mature alongside your brand and grow with you. 
So fractionalization of IP is a very intentional decision, and it can look very different for everybody. So you can create tiers of aspirational products and offer a piece of your brand or a piece of your label to your audience, from lower priced items all the way through to the high end, super rare collectibles, to then virtual twins that can be selling at tenfold their price of their physical counterparts. You could also share some of the IP rights or all of the IP rights with your customers who, if we really think about it, <laughs> they are the real stakeholders and the most valuable shareholders of your brand. So encouraging creation of derivative products and community-generated products will actually help you. If you visit most major cities around the world, whether you're visiting London and you're visiting the Camden Market or if you're in New York visiting Can <laughs> Canal Street, you'll see brands that you recognize at unrecognizable prices. <laughs> so the remix culture is actually a global phenomenon. And people want a piece of your brand. And they will fractionalize your IP with or without you. So why not just join them? This is what I think actually makes Web3 fashion so interesting and this movement so powerful. Because despite their best efforts, even the top leaders and top companies don't have all of the answers. And it is, I think, a major competitive advantage to actually listen to your audiences and let your fans advocate for you and grow alongside with you. That said, we did enter some uncharted waters, legally speaking. The Hermes Birkin bag is one of the most expensive, recognizable, and exclusive bags in, in the world. And as pictured here, Mason Rothschild's artistic adaptation of this iconic bag is actually selling upwards of 125 ETH far eclipsing the price of the physical bag. The current lawsuit that's happening with Hermes will <laughs> certainly set a precedent for the digital fashion industry going forward. So well-made virtual assets can actually be quite difficult to create because they rely on a group of very talented builders and culturally fluent builders to actually execute well. The foundation of this digital Silk Road is going to be created by meta merchants who will put fractionalized IP at the core of their brands and of their meta labels. So let's take a closer look of how creators and companies can actually adapt this information. Similar how the internet turned companies into digital companies with online brands, the emergence of the virtual creative economy is going to turn creators into meta creators and companies into meta companies. NFTs unlock a peer-to-peer -peer economic network that allows der derivative products and fractionalized IP to actually thrive. So as a meta creator, you can form a label solo, or you could actually join a collective. Meta creators can build upon each other's audiences, like we're already seeing Xanadu, Artifact, and Teflon Sega doing together, and develop globally recognized products and experiences around that brand. So I do think that in a not so distant future, we creators will be able to send their PFP avatars to work while they go to sleep. In 2015, Adidas launched a five-year strategy called Creating the New, which focused on becoming, on, on Adidas becoming an open source company where athletes, consumers, and their partners were all part of the brand. The decision made them really well positioned to actually break into the metaverse and become very easily recognized in it because their brand message was already reflected in that environment. Their physical, digital, and meta experiences could all be cohesively integrated and gave them a deeper understanding of their own brand, their audience, and also unearthed new opportunities for them to explore. So everything you do in the metaverse should be reflective of the signal and the core message you actually want your community to resonate with. Red Bull is another really great Web2 company that has successfully built a lifestyle around their products. Red Bull became synonymous with, with concepts like adventure, intensity, energy, extreme sports. So by showing up at the right events, at the right time, and curating the right vibe, they were able to actually tap into new markets and find new reach for their products. Virtual products and digital fashion for your PFPs is really no different from this. A meta company or a meta creator who would dress your PFP will do it for the same reasons that Red Bull actually shows up at X Games. It's for visibility. And digital fashion is a perfect contender for that. Fashion, whether it's physical or virtual, is actually a social tool. It's meant to be experienced. It's meant to be perceived. And the fashion industry has nailed down the brick and mortar experience, down to a science almost. The right music, the right mood, lighting, the presentation, the layout of the store. However, if we look at e-commerce, it looks more like a process than an actual experience. Scroll, add to cart, pay, wait. 
So crypto wallets actually holding your digital fashion assets suffer from the exact same problem. Wallets are financial tools, not places where you want to be hanging out. So saying my clothes are in my wallet just sounds wrong. <laughs> And this brings us to the question, then what does an actual metaverse native experience look like? I think it may look something like this. So PFP holders attract a community of creatives who then develop digital assets around a PFP project. The profits from these projects will be shared by the contributors, by the holders, and also grow the value of the PFP franchise as a whole. As an example, we're already familiar with the Board A Club PFP series. A derivative project called Desperate Ape Wives recently launched the House of Daw, which is a digital fashion label offering complementary virtual wearables and adding additional utility to their stakeholders. So these assets will be available in gaming metaverses. They will be available as immersive AR, VR experiences. They'll feature some really ambitious collaborations, and they'll even have physical collectibles to go along with this. So since their PFP holders actually hold full ownership and commercial usage rights to all of their NFTs, the sky here is really the limit in terms of what kind of content can be created around these projects. Desperate ape wives of the metaverse, anybody? So by now it's clear that metaverse native content uses a very different playbook from what we were familiar with. So instead of talking about a time and a place where our avatars will be hanging out together wearing digital garments, I really wanted to create that space today with the tools that we have avail available. So this is how the MetaLab show was born. Making the first edition of the show in 2021 was really an eye-opening experience for me. I recently directed in March an experience for Crypto Fashion Week, together with Project Ave, to push this format even one step closer to the metaverse that we're all really imagining in our minds. So what this project actually made very clear for me is that in virtual spaces, our job is to become facilitators, not dictators. Whether you're a company or a creator, Web3 Fashion can help you stay relevant, resilient, and also help you become more sustainable by actually moving with your audiences and moving at the speed of crypto culture. We already know that Fashion is produced inefficiently. There's approximately 100 billion garments that are being produced every single year, with more than 30% of them never actually even being sold. So virtualizing your assets can actually help you move one step closer to on-demand production, which will then reduce overproduction, overspending, and unnecessary waste. It's really time, I think, for the fashion industry to learn something from the tech industry and their practice of make once, sell many times. And if reducing costs is not a lucrative enough of a reason for you to get into this, we now know that Fortnite has made $50 million on sales of one set of NFL-themed skins that were at 15 bucks each. Look at those margins. <laughs> 2020 also showed us that the world actually could come to a halt overnight. So building a more resilient business model that is diversified into virtual goods is just a smart business move. And something that's worth noting is that decentralization is actually still a dream and not our reality. And it certainly will not be handed to us. We have to be very proactive about actually building systems that ensure that there is transparency, autonomy, equality, and diversity at their core. Because even avatars and PFP projects can become nothing more than billboards. The role of companies and institutions is actually to establish trust and ever since advertising made trust up for sale to the highest bidder, we've really needed a different way of distributing value on the internet. What's important beyond the NFT drop is the quality of the human lived experience. On-chain activity can actually help pave the way for a new kind of economy that does imbue trust, that gives people back their time, that gives you financial independence, and it also gives you the ability to work on your own terms, living to create, not creating to live. So just like we see our own reflections in the works of fiction, in each other, I do wonder what avatars will show us about ourselves. Maybe the true nature of humanity, maybe our dreams, our ideals, our vices, our fears. Perhaps only the future will tell. But whatever the future holds, I will assure you we will roll up to it in style. Thank you.